Hey uh, folks, so tonight I've got a uh, another Game Boy Pocket here. It's seen, seen some better days, but uh, I did test it, and aside from this horrible nonsense going on with the screen and the fact that it could use a bath, and I definitely should have given it a bath, um, it does work. Um, you'll have to, forgive me, you probably can't see much, but you can see that Nintendo logo coming down. You hear the startup chime. Uh, and then you can sort of kind of see what's going on. I've got just a bootleg multi-cart in it right now, uh, but it does work fine. Um, we are going to fix this issue by installing one of these new backlight kits here. Uh, so this is pretty similar to the um, other all-in-one kits that I have done in these Game Boys before. Um, it's really nothing special, nothing new as far as the install goes. It uses the exact same screen. Um, there's only basically one new feature. I don't think there's any actual fixes as far as um, compared to the old kit, but there was nothing really wrong with the old kit to fix, so you know it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So in the baggie here we have a, um, a little bit of copper tape soldered to a wire. This is a touch sensor that you can use instead of using one of the included uh, flat flex cable based touch sensors. You have this big old block of foam here. Um, this is not... I, I made this mistake in one of my earlier videos I believe. Uh, this doesn't go here. You don't, you don't stick this down to the back. This doesn't uh, provide spacing or anything. Uh, how this is intended to work is you're to take this cut it into chunks uh, about that wide and then about that wide. You can see it's sticking up from my finger there. Uh, and then you're to use this to center the screen within the, the body of the Game Boy. Um, I have made my own spacers and I'll post a link in the description if you want to use these instead. I'm going to use these because quite frankly it's a lot easier and I already have a whole bunch of them. Um, but that's what this is for if you don't want to buy anything extra. This is easier though. Uh, okay, you also get the um, the conversion PCB itself with not one but two touch sensors here. Uh, one is for brightness and then the new one here. I don't know which one's the new one, I forget already. Um, but the new one, I think it's this one, provides uh, color palette control much like the uh, Game Boy Color Kit that I just did a few days ago. Uh, and then of course already attached to it is this PC or this ribbon here with a couple solder points. Unfortunately this is not a solderless kit. This does require some soldering to install. It is not optional. It is mandatory if you want it to work. Uh, and we have the screen itself. Thankfully there does not appear to be any damage this time. And Last but not least, sorry, that was that that dig wasn't entirely fair. Every now and then there are defects, something you know happens in shipping, whatever that happens. Contact the vendor you purchased your kit from. Um, it's certainly not personal or intentional. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it also comes with these two plastic films here, uh, as you can see by the label on them. Paste this insulating film on the back of the PCB board. Um, redundant much, and attach this insulating film to the metal surface on the back of the LCD. So instead of being pre-applied like they are on some other branded kits or even some of the older kits, uh, you are to take these and stick them down to the, uh, looks like this actually goes sideways there. To take that and stick it down to provide some insulation and I'm just gonna do that right now get it out of the way before I completely forget I really don't think it's necessary to do the one on the PCB because this should be insulated from the factory but better safe than sorry and this one's much easier to tell the orientation of because it does have that little cut out in the bottom there all right And let's get to, or let's get back to, tonight's victim, I mean donor. Pop this game out. So 
So like usual, just six tri-wing screws, tri-point screws on the periphery. Um, if your console, like mine, has a little bit of corrosion in there, it is definitely a good time to clean that out. I don't think I'm going to do that in the sake of, for the sake of brevity. Now, as far as cleaning corrosion goes, I've had a lot of good luck with um, like using some distilled white vinegar. Just get a little bit on an old toothbrush or something and then just brush it out. Uh, you, you'll have to actually remove the battery contact to do that. And that just comes out. Uh, where are my tweezers? Oh, there. These aren't the ones I thought they were, but that's okay. Uh, you see this little tab in here, if you press down on that, this whole contact should then be able to slide out. Mine's a little crunchy because it's got a little bit of seasoning on there, but instead of cleaning this, I'm just going to set it aside and use a different one because I have plenty handy. Uh, this one's just from an aftermarket shell. It doesn't even have the tab, but it'll work all the same. And look at that, factory. All right. Set that aside. I think I've already gone over this board. I don't think it needs any cleaning or repairs. Um, as in, I think I've already done that. I know I've already tested it. So even though I haven't actually like cleaned the shell, I have taken this apart. And yeah, it looks good to me. A lot cleaner than I expected. All right, so there is actually a little bit of water damage in here that, oh, that's interesting. I think it's oil um, that I should clean up. So I'm going to pause for a few minutes and just go over this with some isopropyl. All right, that took even less time than I thought it would. I didn't even have to pause. It was a little bit dirty, um, but nothing, nothing too serious. Just one of those things I figured I should clean up because if I don't do it now, I never will. Anyway, pop the screen out just by twisting the uh, shell here. It'll come right out. And I'm going to go ahead and save this because despite how terrible this looks, this is still usable. We can still fix it. Um, like back when I did the... Uh, backlight video on these original ones here. Um, it's still usable and I still have the parts to do that. Probably not going to do another video though. All right. So since this kit does come with a new LCD, which wasn't in the bag, so I forgot to show off. Um, we're going to go ahead and pop out this old LCD. And because I do actually save these, I'm going to try and avoid getting my fingerprints all over it. I'm going to use a little bit of a cloth here and just pop it out from the back. It'll come out easy enough. And then just stick that somewhere safe. But just as a comparison, because the new screen is smaller, this custom lens it comes with does have much thicker bezels. If we stack that on top, you can see how much bigger the bezels are on the new lens compared to the old lens. I kill that can yeah that a little bit better it's I mean it's not too bad when you look at them side by side but it is very noticeable I think All right, set that aside. okay 
I guess let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to do things a little bit differently and I'm going to start off by putting the LCD in, or the lens in. Because I have yet to master the ability of not getting fingerprints on the inside of this thing. And we definitely need to remove this middle part as well. Usually it comes out with it. There are multiple layers to this. And it's so much easier if you get them all in one go. It is pretty easy to accidentally scratch the uh, print though, so be careful if you're using a knife. You can peel this whole thing off. And this is just double-sided tape, and you do still have both layers on it, so you can save this for something fun, or just throw it in that project bin and never use it again. You know, your choice. And there we go. Pop that in there, and we'll pop this screen in here. This goes right about like that, end up towards the top, I believe. And where are, there they are. We have these two spacers. This one goes on this side. So clearly my LCD needs to move over. All right. And this one goes on this side. And it holds it in just like this. should be pretty much it. Uh, it looks like this lens is spaced a little bit differently than some of the ones I've had previously. So it doesn't go all the way towards the top. I think we actually need to put it all the way towards the bottom instead. But the original sticky gasket should hold it down. It's not going to do much for the ingress of dust, but It'll keep the screen where it needs to be. All right. Unless you drop it. Don't drop it. All right, so this goes on here. The two lines on the connector should be facing up. Flip that up. Slide this in. And close it up. And then, just fold that down like that. And pop this back in here. Put the motherboard screws back in to hold everything in. And like I always say, and like I think I've already mentioned, while you have this thing apart, it's a great time to give it a good cleaning. Again, I'm not doing that, but just because I'm not doing that doesn't mean you don't have to. All right. Slide the connector in here, maybe. There it goes. And now we have to do the actual uh, soldering here. So if we take a look at 
and you can refer back to one of my older videos too. But if you take a look at my clear one, you can see there's two wires soldered and two solder points. Uh, one of these goes over to the power switch and then one of these goes to ground. But if this is anything like the older versions of the kit, which I suspect it will be, we won't need to do the ground. So beeping indicates continuity. Ground is right here. Ground is this pad and it beeps. So we're not going to do the soldering, but we do still need to do the power line. Now I believe, well, let me turn on the start of the soldering iron. I believe older versions of this kit did come with wire and quite frankly, you can use this if you want. Um, there's zero reason you can't, except that it already has the copper tape solder to it, just desolder the copper tape. Uh, but I'm probably gonna use this at some point, so I'm just gonna use some of the wire I have laying around. This particular wire is 30 gauge, uh, 30 American wire gauge, solid core kynar, but it really doesn't make that big of a difference. You can use whatever the heck you want. That'll go like that. That is more than long enough. So my kit does already have a couple solder marks on it. Uh, so I'm guessing my kit was tested. That's pretty neat. Hopefully that means I don't have a dud. I have gotten duds before and that's always disappointing. So we're going to solder to the rightmost um, pad. Start off by just putting a glob of solder on there. And let's route this over. There's plenty of slack, that is fine with me. And then the instructions actually say to solder to this middle pad. If you can see that, sorry. The instructions say to solder to this middle pad right here. Um, and it shouldn't make a difference whether you do uh, C or two. They should be connected internally. Um, actually, no, I don't think they are in the pocket. Never mind. The instructions say to solder to C. I've had much better luck by soldering to pin one right here, all the way over on the left. I have seen some, now this hasn't personally happened to me, but I have seen some kits where uh, they soldered to that common pin and then um, you know, for whatever reason, the screen just doesn't turn off when you turn the Game Boy off, and that's not good. Uh, but if you solder it right here, the screen will only ever be on when the Game Boy is on. For sure. And that's it. It's all the soldering. So now we're just going to tuck this touch sensor in. Make sure it's lined up with the top of the shell. Actually, I'm going to fold it the other way. So I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to bend this out of the way. Shouldn't do that, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to try folding this down. Oh, that's going to make it even worse. Never mind. Okay, so we'll fold it that way and hopefully that works. We'll do the same thing for this one, but it goes behind the housing for the power switch. Just like that. It's not great, but it does work. All right. Don't forget to actually put the power switch back. And it should all go back together pretty easily.
All right, and what game should we try it out with? I don't even know where my... I just had it. I swear I just had it before I started the video. Oh, there it is. Don't worry, I found it. I said I was missing this last time. It was right on my desk. So, straight off the bat, I'm noticing a lot of speaker noise. Oh, of course. I don't know if you can hear that. It's quiet. Oh, did I solder it to the wrong pin? I think I meant to solder it to the middle pin. Did I? Because you see it kind of hangs out for a second before turning off. All right, anyway, we'll come back to that. I got distracted with the speaker noise. All right, so here we go. Notice it looks almost, kinda, like a Game Boy Color with that pseudo color palette thing. Uh, so on the left here, we should have brightness. And it does switch all the way off. Switch it all the way on. And then on the right here, we should have color palettes. Which, makes significantly more sense on a Game Boy Pocket. This is this is the same palette you get with the older versions of the kit. You just get the black and white, but with this kit you get this kind of orange tint, uh, kind of yellow and purple, very blue, very blue, green, red, yellow. Looks almost Almost like that classic DMG color, but it's quite a bit more yellow. Um, sorry, I'm trying to describe it even though it's on camera because I don't think my phone's picking up the best color accuracy for this. And then purple, and then back to grayscale. Uh, so like the previous versions of the kit, I'm not seeing any frame dropping or tearing. Quite frankly, it looks great. Uh, not surprised, especially since I've already done the uh, Game Boy Color version of this, and that kit didn't surprise me either. Didn't really expect anything from this kit. Um, and the previous versions of this kit, you know, they haven't really disappointed me. There is, allegedly, an iteration of this particular kit that has a... Um, there's this like wave effect going up and down the screen, but it looks like they have that resolved. Now I heard, I think this is just a rumor, so don't quote me on it. Uh, I did hear that that was a known issue and they actually pulled a lot of the kits from sale because of that issue. Um, so it looks like they've got it sorted. Uh, I don't know, looks pretty good to me. I'll throw a link in the description um, just for more context on that. But looks fantastic. Let's try out a uh, more high power cart. So, oh, it's in my Game Boy Color. That's why. But uh, easy flash. And I know I forgot to run the power consumption tests, but I didn't quite forget so much as I just didn't really want to do it. Um, when I ran them on the Game Boy Color, I wasn't surprised by anything, and the fact that this isn't booting my Easy Flash is still not surprising me. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that noise coming from the speaker. But Game Boy Pockets are notorious for having power-related issues when it comes to uh, flash carts and backlight kits, especially if you combine the two, 
and that is one of the things that the um, EverDrive GB X series excels at fixing. Now it's not perfect. In fact, it might not even boot, but we'll certainly give it a shot. There it goes. Yeah, obviously it's better, but with the, all the noise this thing's making, it's not great. And it's not even something I can turn off. Uh, let's... Hi, kitty. Let's try the scrolling bars test. Just to make sure. Um, same as usual, whenever the S in scrolling passes the left-hand side of the screen, the ROM issues an LCD reset command to the screen. Uh, with other backlight kits and even OEM screens that usually introduces some artifacting or uh, especially with some aftermarket kits, uh, some screen tearing or frame drops. And quite frankly, there's none of that here. Uh, same with previous versions of the kit. It looks fantastic to me. I see no issues. Let's take a look at the menu. Is that going to work? And let's take a look at the gradients. Just so I can show off the color palettes a little bit better. All right, so this is not the default palette, but one of the ones I accidentally just selected. Uh, we have white, yellow, orange, and black, despite how it looks on my camera here. And the blacks look significantly more black in real life. If I hold this up at an angle, that's about, that's more accurate to what it looks like in person, I'd say. Next palette, uh, white, yellow, purple, blue, and I think that's a little bit more accurate to what it looks like. Unfortunately, the viewing angles on these screens just, it's not fantastic. Um, light blue, darker blue, darkest blue, black. Yeah, I think this is a real testament to how not great the viewing angles are. All right, this is the one that looks kind of like a DMG. Uh, so we have green, darker green, darkest green, and then black again. That's about right. Red, darker red, darkest red, black. Uh, yellow, medium yellow, dark yellow. Slightly dehydrated, slightly more dehydrated, severely dehydrated, and then black. <laughs> purple, 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 so on and so forth. And this is definitely purple despite what my phone or your screen might be showing. Um, my phone is picking this up as very blue, but it is definitely a lavender color, I'd say. If we angle it, does that get any better? No. And then back to just the normal grayscale. White, light gray, dark gray, black. I will say the um, potential for improvement, if they made this darker, this dark gray a little bit darker, I think it would look a little bit better. In person, these two colors are pretty similar. Again, my phone is just doing an awful job of picking up the colors, but yeah. All right. So... My conclusion then, this is still a really good kit for the price. I'm gonna take this apart again and I'm gonna actually swap in another Game Boy Pocket motherboard, see if that helps out with that audio noise issue. Um, actually, before I even get that far, let's just try different batteries. Because I know Game Boy Pockets have a lot of issues with rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries just because they're lower voltage than 
alkaline batteries. And I think, I've been using these for quite a while, so I don't actually know if they're... All right, so these aren't quite fresh. <laughs> they're a little on the low side. So they might not be much better. No, let's try it with the EverDrive. How did I lose it? What the fuck? How does this keep happening? I haven't gone anywhere. You know, let's see if it boots the easy flash then. I'm still hearing a lot of noise, so probably not. Looks like I got closer though. I don't think that's happened. Don't worry, I found it. All right, so booted that time. Let's try one more thing. I've been using these batteries in pretty much every Game Boy Pocket video, and here are more of the same, just completely fresh. Not quite as good as I expected, but definitely more charge. Wow, there's no noise. And look at that, it booted the first time. Let's try the easy flash. So yeah, there we go. It's just a matter of batteries. It's really particular with batteries. I believe that doing a lithium ion battery mod can help significantly. Um, but quite frankly, I just, I don't have any cells to to try that out with. I don't have any cells that fit nicely in the Game Boy Pocket shell. So I'll probably do that at some point because quite frankly, this other mod can use that as well. This is the Funny Playing IPS kit. Um, another cheap multi-cart in there. But I guess I'm not going to do motherboard swap because I just figured out my issue and the issue was just low batteries. Let's see what voltage these are actually at. These aren't fully depleted. One point three. So there's still quite a bit of life left in these. They're just too low to boot a Game Boy Pocket with a backlight kit and a, a ROM cart here. Um, but I'm, I mean, that's just, it's kind of the territory when it comes to these things. So would I recommend this kit? Yeah, I mean, personally, I still think this is the better kit, um, but I understand that due to the install requirements of this kit, it's quite a bit more intimidating and not necessarily as friendly and this one is still better on battery life, marginally. Um, oh, how did that happen? Son of a diddly. Okay. Um, sorry, totally distracted. Totally bummed now, but totally distracted. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good kit, especially if you don't want to cut up your Game Boy Pocket shell because this is 100% reversible. Uh, in fact, after videos like these, I typically end up just taking it apart and returning it back to stock anyway because I don't need this many backlit pockets. But, oh, one more. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a good kit. I don't mind it. I like it. Um, it. It performs very well. 
there's very minimal glitching that I've noticed. I do really like the um, the color palettes. I think that's a really cool feature. And quite frankly, I'm surprised it took this long to make its way into these uh, kits, especially since other kits have had similar features. Um, but you know, it's it's good. Just be aware that you're only going to get like two hours out of a set of double A or triple A's. A button on this thing actually does really suck. It works, and if you want to, you can just chalk it up to me being terrible at video games. But I'm blaming the A button. I don't like how dark this color palette makes things. It's certainly playable, but the other palettes are better, I think. like this one. Cool thing though, these kits do retain their settings. So if you set it to color palette, like red for example, power it back up, it'll flash back to the white, but It'll load the settings and then pull it back up. It's pretty cool. It should do the same thing with brightness as well. So if we set this down to, if I even can, there we go. Oh, you notice the noise gets progressively quieter and quieter until it goes away with the backlight off. Power it off, power it back on. Notice the backlight is still off. And because these are transflective screens, you can still see it with the backlight off. It will save some battery, but not too, too much. But probably use it with the backlight on because it looks better. These are kind of dark screens regardless. But there we go. I'm pretty happy with it. So I will, uh, like usual, I'll go ahead and throw some links in the description uh, if you want to check out this kit for yourself. Uh, this kit was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop uh, for the purpose of this video. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. I do have a little bit of a bias there, but this is my genuine, honest opinion, I think. Or at least I'm trying to do my best at that. I've never played this game before in my life. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I don't think I'm winning. I'm not sure. I don't really care either. Um, but anyway, yeah. Good kit. I'll throw some links in the description. So if you want to get your own, uh, you can check out their website. They've always been really super awesome to me. Um, and I don't just mean sending me stuff. I mean, I have purchased stuff from them and they've given me some really good customer support. Uh, always replies to my emails right away. Um, even hangs out on the Game Boy Discord if you want to hit them up that way. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's a good kit. I'll throw some links to some related videos in the description and um, I guess I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.